Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Market Down Podcast. My name is Nick Cummings, joined this week by Danny Hernandez. Not a whole lot of news this week, but what news we did have mostly revolved around the massive amount of injuries that happened to top stars in both WWE and AEW. We will start in WWE with the most visual of all the injuries that happened. Cody Rhodes completely tearing his pectoral tendon off of his bone and still somehow wrestling his match at Hell in a Cell against Seth Rollins and winning that match, I might add. Uh, so he was written off this off TV this past Monday when Seth attacked him with a sledgehammer, even though we all knew he had already torn his pack. They brought it into the storyline. Uh, he will be undergoing surgery. Uh, he will be out about six to seven months, according to early estimates. Uh, so, Danny, I know you watched that match at, at Hell in a Cell and Monday Night Raw, obviously, for your fast forward. Uh, what do you think of Cody wrestling this match? And what now happens to WWE since he's out? That's that's a loaded question you got <laughs> there. But I have very mixed feelings about Cody wrestling the match. Uh, I don't want to give him props because I don't want him to think he did the right thing. Because I don't think he should have gone out there. I know he already tore it as much as possible so the damage couldn't have been any worse but there's a lot of things that can still go wrong you know your other muscles and body parts are going to overcompensate when one of the other parts doesn't work in so you could have injured so much more of your body the um, old kinetic chain <laughs> you know it's just uh but that being said oh my god it made it one of maybe the best hell in a cell matches of all time, at least the best one in the last decade, and maybe the best one since I can't remember a good Hell in a Cell besides the obvious ones. I'm trying to think. I like, if I'm going a little more low-key, Usos versus New Day was pretty good. That was really good. I mean... That might be the last one I watched. (laughs) We've had good ones. All the women's ones were good, but like, this was... This is what Hell in a Cell used to feel like. It wasn't just the match itself being good. It's it's the feel of it that... so The fear know, of being it, in the cell and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, it made the cell feel deadly again as opposed to just a hardcore match with a cage around it. It was... Only, only happening because of a branded pay-per-view instead of it being like a serious grudge match that has absolutely hit its limit. Like when... I'm be honest, the crowd was dead for the beginning of that match because they were kind of just didn't know how to react to Cody's bruise. Because the moment he takes off his, his stupid Homelander jacket, the crowd is like gasped and then goes silent for a while because it's like, is he really going to wrestle like this? Like, this isn't okay. Like, the crowd had that. And this is Chicago. And they were like, this is not cool. But uh, as far as... So yeah, I don't want to give him full pro- like it, it worked. It, it 100% worked and it makes him like the ultimate baby face, but I don't want to give in to a sick fucking blue-eyed baby face fetish that he has going on that he was willing to do this. I mean, this guy fucking set himself on fire for us. Like he is willing. This has always been there. Cody has always been willing to do insane shit for us. And we just never appreciated it because we're kind of the bad guys too. It's not just Cody. Like He's the problem, but we're also the problem. It's not mutually exclusive, you know? But uh, this is terrible timing. This could not have come at a at a worse time. Like, he is the number one baby face in WWE, and this solidified it, even though he's written off TV. Like, no one comes close to him now. Like, not Drew McIntyre, not, God, not Bobby Lashley. Sorry, James, I know you like him for some reason, but, like, he's not even fucking close. But, Losing MVP killed him, but that's another yeah, discussion. Yeah, no, 100% did, and it's not even a discussion. It's just that is 100% a fact and a statement, and that's it. There's no debate in it, but uh, there's no one even close. Like, we'll get into a little bit, but, like, there, there's a huge void left by Cody going down, and they're not filling it with Seth, which 
you know, before I Seth attacked him, I thought that's what they were going to do because he, it was like, how do you get out of this? Seth looks like a chump because he lost to a guy with the fucking, whose tattoo bled into the rest of his fucking body and Seth still couldn't beat him. So like he was a fucking loser. And I was like, oh shit, having him show respect and just kind of like not be a heel about it is the best way to protect him in defeat. But nope, he attacked him anyway and still a heel. Which means that they're going to have at least one more match with Cody comes back, you know? So, um, yeah, real enticing to get people over from AEW. I mean, it is because he's being pushed as the top babyface, but, you know, god damn, you know? I would like him to do something else when he comes back, but we'll see. I Who knows? I saw a good theory that uh, maybe he is in Money in the Bank, but he never actually wrestles. He just gets attacked before the match and then comes out and pushes Seth off the ladder at the end and climbs the ladder uh, because they seem hell-bent on. Because he said if he could, he would be at Money in the Bank. He said that in his promo. So it's almost like he's operating under the intention of making it to Money in the Bank somehow. Which would be nuts. And it would give me the lengthy Money in the Bank yeah. Rain, for lack of a better phrase, that I was uh, discussing, I think, in our group chat the other day, because I know this is a money in the bank discussion, not a coding discussion, but I do miss the fact that people used to hold that for a long time. You made it way cooler, but Absolutely. not like that. And it, it, you're right about the timing. It is the worst possible timing for Cody. Like you say, he was the top baby face. He is undefeated since his return to WWE. He is clearly being groomed take at least one of those titles off of Roman, whether that was in a straight up match or in uh, or via the money in the bank. We don't know. But either way, he was definitely being tracked to that. And now, assuming he goes on to have surgery in the next couple of days of this recording. Yeah, like he's gone and it's it really sucks. Now, like you said, they have to fill that void at the top of the card. And I think we'll get into that a bit later. And, but it's, it's going to be difficult. I kind of like it not being Seth. I, I enjoy, I'm enjoying this version of Seth. He's almost like the Joker in a way, sort of like, I still, you know, he's like drip God, but him coming out in his last three or like big pay-per-view matches dresses, the shield again, dressed in the polka dots of uh, dusty roads, uh, I'm blanking on the other one, but oh, um, he dressed as Rey Mysterio when he faced uh, Dom. He dressed like the Halloween Havoc Rey Mysterio gear. That was a while back now, so maybe it wasn't the last three. But he's been pulling out some really good, uh, really good ring gear to fuck with people, and I'm really enjoying his character as a heel right now. So maybe turning him right now wouldn't have been the best. I am enjoying it too. I just don't like the comparisons to the Joker because. I saw it on Reddit, Seth. I stole it. <laughs> He's one of my favorites, but, um, you know, I believe the Joker uh, would be, like, a top-level promo, where Seth is just, like, a decent, good promo. You know, he's not that crazy. He's just, he's good with the suits. Like, he's a really good WWE heel, you know? He's just, he's not iconic like the Joker. Fair. And he's also now lost to a guy a handicapped person, you know, um, he has no credibility left. So he needs to do something to regain credibility. And that beatdown was not enough, not nearly enough. So. Yeah, he needs to win something. It's just there's nothing to win. Like, he's not going to beat Theory right now. I don't even know who has the IC title, but he'd have to go to SmackDown, I assume, to get it. And I don't think they want to move him over there. I think that so. title's going to change hands by the time this comes out. So, <laughs> Spoiler alert. But, yeah, it's it's a tough position for them. Now, looking forward, like I said at the top of this, Cody is expected to be back in six to seven months, depending on when he gets the surgery, how everything goes. Sometimes WWE does like to exaggerate the timelines just so guys can make surprise returns earlier than they should. <clears throat> John Cena. But... That time frame would kind of put him around the Rumble. So, you know, if they do want to wait till Royal Rumble, have him come back there, 
that'd be pretty cool. That'd be a great return, and you can slingshot him straight for a Roman Reigns match. Yeah, which I think is better than him winning Money in the Bank. I don't think him winning Money in the Bank actually makes sense because he's too blue-eyed of a fucking baby face to cash in on a prone opponent at this point. I wouldn't be surprised if he was one of those dorks who announced his match ahead of time and then lost via disqualification or shenanigans. And <laughs> Knowing Cody, he would be. Like, that's his yeah. little character now. Like, he plays things straight up. Like, he would definitely be the dork to announce his match beforehand. But I'm challenging you at this pay-per-view in the main events, and I'll cash in then. You're right. He would absolutely do that. The Rumble would be a lot better. And I think that pop would be so good. I don't even know what the Rumble is this year, and I have to imagine it would be amazing. But let's move on from Cody, go into back where he used to be, AEW, where they've had a slew of top-tier injuries. We start with the biggest one, which we have already discussed a few times on this channel, CM Punk's injury. Now, uh, we tape on Wednesday after Dynamite. They announced on Dynamite that Punk had had successful surgery on Wednesday, and he is expected to make a full recovery. We still don't know specifically what the injury is. They mentioned his surgery was on his lower leg. Punk referenced in his promo on Rampage that he had some broken bones. Max Caster made a joke that he broke Punk's foot during his rap on Dynamite. So we're not entirely sure what the injury is. We're not even entirely sure his timeline to come back. But his surgery has been successful, Danny. And now we just kind of have to play the waiting game with uh, his return and this interim championship that they're currently in the process of determining. Yeah, uh, another terribly timed injury. I mean, all injuries are terribly timed, but, you know, this this one is even worse, honestly, because, oh boy, I think we were really in for something special with this title reign for Punk and... You know, it's a shame. It's, it affects, there's a trickle-down effect here. You know, it's almost like like Hangman's almost lost now, and whoever Punk was going to feud with first is after, well, after Forbidden Door. <laughs> yeah, because uh, we already lost the Tanahashi match in the short term. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we technically lost it before it was even ever announced, really, if you think about it, but uh, it's, you know, it's, it's devastating, but if it's his foot, who knows, it, that could be tricky, it could heal quickly, it could get re-injured easily, it could end up taking a while, but the fact that they're going to have an interim champion just, I think, gives us all a lot of uh, reassurance that this won't be long, and it'll only be temporary, and, you know, there's, there's fallout from this, and we're, like, we're going to get the interim champion. That's, you know, you can have, there's a few different opinions you can have on that, but it's, we're getting something in the meantime, you know, either way, because if they just strip Punk of the title, whoever wins it next would still feel like an interim champion anyway, so you might as well just have the interim champion. You know, I didn't think about it like that until literally just now, but. Sounds like that guy agrees with you. I'm not his horn. <laughs> <laughs> gotta love the Bronx man Here. Uh, but yeah it's it's a bummer like this one hurts way more than the Cody one because I love Cody but I still am I still hold a weird bitterness and resentment but I'm happy to watch him every month it's weird when Punk is just this is just all sad I'm like oh, I was so excited for him to beat Hangman I was saying it for weeks so it was like I and for it to just happen like this, like this, oof, this one really hurts, man. I don't know. How do you feel about it? Obviously, like you said, this is absolutely horrific timing. He just won the title, and not not even a week later, he has to get surgery and uh, be off TV. We're missing out on the Tanahashi match, as I mentioned, which sucks. But, yeah, this just kind of kills – all of the momentum that has been building since he joined the company. You know, we, we do talk a lot about Hangman's story and how long that took and how they 
spent all that time putting that in the place. I, I don't recall how long it's been since the first dance, but it's been a while. And they spend a good amount of time building Punk to be the new champion. And Tony Khan is was super hyped to have him as champion. You didn't see his uh, post-pay-per-view press conference. He went on a bit of a tirade. Uh, started yelling at Bischoff, but it really was about how excited he was for CM Punk to be champion and everything he was going to get to be able to do with Punk as champion. And now, for the meantime, we're not going to get to see that. Uh, I do agree with you that I think them having an interim championship instead of just outright stripping Punk or having him relinquish it does mean this isn't going to be that long of an injury. Uh, in UFC, when they have an interim champion, it's usually not a long injury uh, for the act, for the proper champion. They'll have maybe one or two defenses as interim champ at max. But at a certain point, Dana White understands that if you're out a certain uh, extreme length of time, then you're going to have to be stripped. And in this case, I think if Punk was injured to the point where – he was going to be out for a significant length of time. He would have been stripped. So hopefully this is maybe like a four-month thing, tops. I see it that being, honestly, that being the max. But like you said, the foot's a tricky thing. There's a lot of really small bones in the foot. They're really finicky. They can break really easily. Same thing with your hand, but uh, your foot as well. Just is a lot of small shit. You could step the wrong way and break a bone. I did that once playing basketball. I literally just landed on the side of my foot. And I broke a bone. It was probably this big. I didn't even go to the doctor because it was like, it's broken. There's nothing they could do. I just got to wait for it to heal. Sometimes that's what you have to do. Sometimes you have to have surgery just to speed up the process or, you know, if it went sideways or something. So whatever it is, I don't expect Punk to be out too long, but it's still kind of sucks that we have to wait for everything that we were going to get out of this storyline. Uh, another champ who was unfortunately hurt in AEW is Scorpio Sky. So Sky, according to Sky, said that he strained a muscle on his knee all the way up to his groin. Uh, he said he believes it to be minor. So we're still getting storylines out of this. It's just another thing of, you know, when it rains, it pours. He was on Dynamite this past week. Uh, Wardlow is challenging him for the title. So, A, hopefully that mess is going to end. But, B, uh, this doesn't appear to be Major Danny. And uh, we're st- even if he has to lose the title and miss some time just to heal properly, uh, this doesn't look to be as big of an issue as the Punk or Cody thing. I mean, I don't think anything will ever appear to be as big of an issue as the Cody thing because, <laughs> goddamn, that looked bad. But Like I said, that is the most visual injury we've seen in a long time. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I'm not too worried about Sky. Like, like you said, he was on Dynamite this week, uh, and he was, he was walking down the ramp. So, you got to think in a couple of weeks, I'll be fine. They'll have that match. And all he has to do is take a couple of power bombs and that'll be that. <laughs> so, you know, hopefully we can just get this, this TNT mess behind us and move forward, uh, you know? Yeah. Uh, and the final AEW injury, major one, is Brian Danielson. He will be out one to two weeks after an injury during the Anarchy in the Arena match at Double or Nothing. They haven't officially announced what this is. Uh, he was not on Dynamite this past week, which was, I think, slightly significant considering everything that went on with the Casino Battle Royal and them challenging for the interim championship. Uh, reports also were that he wasn't able to fly. So that's usually not a good thing. Um, but we genuinely have no idea what this is, whether it's hopefully it's not a concussion considering his past history. But this could be head, shoulders, knees, or toes. These or toes. Either way, I'm I'm upset about it. I really missed Brian this week. So God, I hope he recovers quickly. I just so I feel like so much is derailing AW right now. And I I don't 
a punk thing I, I don't like and it's hard to live with, but I think I can, but I, I can't lose can't lose punk and Brian at the same time. That is fucking brutal. I know like literally one year ago we didn't have punk or Brian in AW, but uh, you know, we do now and there's no going back and I can't go back. So I, I just I want Brian back. It's it's just tough because it's the first time we've really had to deal with so many injuries in AEW. Like, you know, we've Kenny's been gone with injury, you know, so a lot of the top guys are gone with injury and it's it's weird. And then you got the whole MJF situation, which is a fucking nightmare in itself. Who did not appear on Dynamite this week yeah. past week. Neither did Miro, but um yeah. but it's okay. Actually it's not okay, but the MJF one at least makes sense. You don't expect him to be there after that. That would yeah. be weird if he was. <laughs> I will say Miro is in that uh, newly established tournament, so he will be back on TV very shortly. So it's not the end of the world. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fine. But it's it's just tough, man. When the injury bug, it's – once it starts, man, it's, it's almost like the rule of three, you know. It's – so now in wrestling, it's fucking like three per company or something. But it's tough. And hey, we're we're suffering through it too. We got we got injuries on the pod. Like I I got a bad shoulder right now. It's it's not great. James has an even an even worse shoulder than me. It's 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 terrible. He's we don't know how long he's going to be gone for. And fucking Chad. Chad's not injured, but he... He's still hung is, over from his album release party. <laughs> yeah, and one of the things he did to celebrate, uh, which we don't condone on the Markdown podcast, and we're actually very against him. We spoke out against it, but we can't tell Chad what to do. But uh, he's off He's off the coast of Japan, hunted whales, and it's just, it's terrible. It's fucking, it's unacceptable what he's doing right now. Uh, I'm Sorry, I'm blowing up your spot, Chad, but I just you gotta stop. It's it's your worst quality as a person. Uh, just just keep <laughs> watching High Q and don't do the other extracurricular stuff you're doing. You know. <laughs> uh, I think that might be the first time you seriously broke me. <laughs> um. Okay. Um <laughs> where were we? Oh yeah, Brian. Um it is, I think, at least pertinent to mention the fact that a couple of weeks ago Brian did get his leg stuck in between the ramp and the ring apron. But again, not knowing what his injury is, we have no idea if that's related. But I think he'll be back by uh I think blood and guts. Is, is it June 29th or July 29th? Now I don't remember. But he'll be back in a couple of weeks. So, Blood and Guts? Yeah. What? Uh, I have no idea when it is, honestly. I know. They put, they put the graph. It's something the 29th. I just forget if it's June or July. Either way, uh, he'll be back. And to all of these guys, uh, we want to wish them all a speedy recovery. You know, getting injured sucks. So hopefully they all get better soon. Uh, let's move off of that and uh, back into the ring with people who are still wrestling. Finn Balor has taken control of Judgment Day. Now, for those of you who watch Danny's Fast Forwards, he has obviously discussed this, but we wanted to take another look at it. Uh, a, I wasn't there. And uh, B, considering everything that happened with Cody that we mentioned we thought it'd be interesting to go into it a bit more. So for those of you who didn't watch the segment, uh, after Hell in a Cell, in which Finn Balor, AJ Styles, and Liv Morgan lost to Judgment Day, who is, or was, Edge, Damian Priest, and Rhea Rhea Ripley, Edge announced that he was going to have a new member joining, and that member, surprisingly, was Finn Balor who came down and told Edge that after his loss, he talked to Rhea and Damien, and they found out they had a lot in common. And then Damien said that Edge gave him the tools to eliminate anything holding them back. And the only thing holding them back now was Edge. And then they proceeded to kick the shit out of him. Uh, They used the chair. I don't know, was that 
I don't even know what that's called. Like the bottom piece that Edge keeps breaking off and putting in people's mouths. Finn used that. Uh, there was a vicious concierto from Damian Priest. And it was a surprise. A lot of people were really, really shocked at this. A lot of people were shocked that Finn was joining in the first place. But the fact that they threw Edge out of the group so quickly was an absolute shock to most. So there are some rumors that this might be because Edge didn't want to take a supernatural turn with the storyline for the group. Uh, there are some, there's some speculation that this could be related to Cody being out and them needing a new top baby face and Ed, perhaps Edge could fill that role. Uh, so Danny, uh, you were the one who wanted to really take another look at this. Uh, what have your opinions changed since your fast forward on Monday? And uh, what do you think of the rumors and speculation? Yes, I'm a very different person than I was on Monday. On Monday, I was tired and I just wanted to get through Raw and it was a little bit of a slog. So that surprise was almost refreshing because it was it was not a great show. It was Cody stuff, which ended badly and just knowing that Seth was going to have another match with him whenever he gets back. Uh, there was Becky Lynch losing to fucking Dana Brooke, which is depressing. I don't want to talk about it, but it, oh, it's part of the story, at least. You know, like, it's that, you know, she's not buried or anything, but it's like, I, I don't, I would like to skip forward in the story a little bit, you know, <laughs> but... um, I blocked that out of my memory. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, yeah no problem. And I figured if anyone else is going to wallow and it with me it might as well be you but uh so then that happened in our row. I was almost like oh fuck something noteworthy happened okay cool and also Finn finally has something to fucking do holy shit but really I know you just summarized it for people but I would also like to once again summarize it uh see what happened was at the pay-per-view the cohesive unit of Judgment Day beats uh, Bull Live Club, as people on the internet were calling them, uh, cleanly, really. No no cheating, just cleanly beat them. You I like would like Bull to Live Club. Yeah, no, I was going to say, I would like to quickly point out you can't, oh, Bull Live Club. I was going to say, you can't call it Live Club because that's a club in Miami. You can get your ass sued. <laughs> uh, but, you know, they, they cleanly beat them. And Finn Balor was the one who took the pin in that match. So Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest looked at that and were like, yeah, this fucking loser should be our new leader. This guy who never fucking wins anything is way better than Edge, who has led us all to victory uh, and who we just won with. Yeah. Let's join the fucking loser of the match who never wins anything, who's never won on pay-per-view since, like, before the fucking pandemic. <laughs> like, it's insane. Like, yeah, this is our new guy. This is our leader, you know? And it's great for Balor. It's, it makes Priest and Rhea look really dumb. And it doesn't make sense for Edge. And I, I tend to lean, I think it's a combination of both stories where they're like, oh, like we can just turn Edge babyface and that holds us over for, until Cody gets back. But also I believe the supernatural stuff because they did a couple of supernatural things like a month ago and the crowd did not take to it well. Damian Priest left, the lights went off during his match he had with AJ and when the lights came back on, he was just gone and the match was over. No one announced anything either. The match was just over. No one announced that the match was over. It was just over and never explained. Ah, see, that's weak because at least when Seth does it, he becomes the Undertaker. So I guess Damien hasn't leveled up to there yet. Yeah, you know, like that's that's totally fine. If if Priest <laughs> was replaced by fucking Sting or someone, you know, it would be acceptable. But it was just nothing, and the crowd didn't take that. And you know what? Edge, to his credit, does seem like the type of guy that will take criticism and feedback and know when to like do something about it and know when to ignore it and so I could believe that I could believe it's a little bit of both uh but god it just 
it's great for Finn. It's bad for Rhea and Dan because now, like, I don't see Judgment Day being an act by the time the Rumble comes around. Like, I don't think they're going to be together by then. I think it'll be they're going the way of retribution now instead. Oof. Uh, you know, at least with Finn is, and that's sad because Finn is great, you know, but, and he should be leading a badass faction, but he's just been beaten in the ground so much. And also you could have just, the story would be so much better if you just spread it out over time, like have Finn join and then slowly take over. Like you can do this. You can have the group turn on edge. Absolutely. But it makes no sense for them to do it now after one match as a trio where they won when they take the loser of the match and be like, that's our new leader. This is how we're going to get up in the world. Finn fucking Balor. This is the guy who flopped like a fish last time they had a title match on a pay-per-view. Fuck. And that's your leader? <laughs> Another thing I blocked out of my memory. I would have liked the long-term booking for it, too, because if anybody knows how to usurp a leader, it's the guy who founded Bullet Club. <laughs> that happens almost quarterly over there. <laughs> I think he knows I think he knows how that works. So it, it would have been really nice to watch him do it very slowly, plant seeds, you know. But I can see, you know, if the supernatural rumors are to be true – that, you know, it, putting Baller there kind of makes sense because he does have the demon in his back pocket, you know, and it could work. And also, too, th this group would have worked if they did it from the jump, too. Rhea, Damien, and Finn would have been cool. But now Finn's just kind of stepping into something that's not his, like you said, after losing like that, which makes Rhea and Damien just look dumb. And it just doesn't feel right. You know, like if Finn created his own faction, it would have been dope. Now he's just cribbing Edge's notes, and it's it's not nearly as cool. It's not earned. There's yeah. no reason that they should have listened to Finn talk them out of Edge being their leader. It just it doesn't make sense. It, it has all the makings of a panic move of a last minute uh, decision. And well, do you think that's because Cody got hurt? Do you think they're going to try to push edges the face now towards the I top? Really, I really do think so because they did, they leaned away from the supernatural stuff. I can't believe that it was that much of a deal breaker when they stopped doing it like four or five weeks ago was the last time they did it, anything remotely supernatural. It's like, I, I, I think it could be both but I would say it's more because it's a panic move because of Cody getting hurt. Well, I guess my next Even question... Then, I don't know, because when does Edge come back? Because they wrote him off with an injury, technically, so I don't know. I'm sorry, what was your next question? Well, I was going to say, my next question is, who the fuck else do they have to push to the top of the card? I mean, before this turn, maybe it could have used Finn, but they decided to go this route. I mean, and, and, and he already lost to Roman... I know you have Drew, I know you have Bobby technically, but you know, I think they're trying to save Drew towards, you know, the UK pay-per-view. And I just I don't know who the hell else is on Raw. And you're Drew's the not even on Raw. Yeah, so. exactly. So I don't even know who the hell else they have to push this the top baby face of Raw. Uh AJ Ezekiel. Seth, <laughs> uh, I mean he he is the top face, but uh <laughs> You know, he's not a title picture kind of he's above the he's one of the few wrestlers that's above the title. He doesn't need that shit, you know. He doesn't need to stoop down to Roman's level. He's doing great <laughs> where he is. But if anything, he needs to go to SmackDown to feud with Sami Zayn now. Uh that or Sami Zayn needs to come to Raw to feud with them. But I digress. Uh there's there is no one that's the thing. You know, this is and but that's a problem they created because they AJ could easily fill this void, but you haven't pushed him like a top baby face in so long. So, like, whose fault is that? You know, and anyone they have, I would honestly argue Riddle is truly the top face on Raw right now, and he is the guy who's trying to go after Roman and just put the fucking rocket on him, match, like, and push him like crazy. Why the fuck not? And then there's Randy, who's out right now, but I'm sure we'll be back soon enough. 
but because he would randy was honestly the most over person on raw every week it's it's a lot of weeks it's not even close so i do my best to try to watch their clips because they are pretty fucking funny but like brittle's feuding with the miz right now i think or something i don't know i saw something about marie's talking about mrs balls and (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. Miz wouldn't show his balls on TV because he's a fucking heel. Like, he wouldn't fucking pull down his pants for everyone. But no, he used Miz as a platform to challenge Roman, and they just beat Miz. So ah. he's going after the bloodline. It's just he's taking a weird route to get there. <laughs> well, that might be because it's been reported Roman isn't going to be at Money in the Bank, which I think we all knew it was just, you know now kind of more official but roman is completely mia at this point so the whole booking surrounding all of that gets a little wonky not just for riddle too for anybody they try to push at roman because he's not fucking there it comes a very one-sided feud yeah it's almost like giving him both titles was a bad idea or like you know giving both titles to a part-timer is a bad idea they used to do it's it with just one now they're doing it with both it's also bad because, you know, the whole time in the buildup to WrestleMania, they didn't once mention that not only were both titles on the line, but fucking Brock Lesnar's schedule was also on the line. You know, I would have been a lot more invested if I knew that that was one of the stakes of the match. But <laughs> whatever, man. I don't mind not Roman not being there. It's money in the bank. You don't need that fucking loser there. The money in the bank matches are good enough. But Fair. It's just weird not having your top champion around for this length of time. Because like all of your other feuds then just kind of, I don't want to say they feel worthless, but they're not going in any solid direction because they're not trying to win anything but the feud, at least, except for like those really big grudge matches where two guys just fucking hate each other, you know, you could at least consider, okay, these two people are fighting because they're going to go after the title after this. And that makes sense. But now these two people are fighting and then the winner, you know, trying to use some logic, but we all know WWE doesn't, but the winner would then in theory has nowhere to, the winner in theory has nowhere to go. Because there is no title to go after. You can try to challenge Roman, but at that point, you're just yelling at the fucking wall. And maybe when he decides to come back, you get that shot, depending on how hot you are, hot you are, excuse me, when he finally does show up. So it just completely kills your booking. And we the, what also kills your booking is the guy you were allegedly or presumably grooming to be that guy to challenge for the title just tore his pectoral tendon off his uh, bone and is going to be out for six to seven months yeah like that's the thing is like the the booking of that hell in the saw match with cody established them as the guy as the baby face as the ultimate baby face the problem is he's gone now so not only like Booking him like that made it harder for everyone else because how is he gonna I like it's just it's just a bad time all around. These companies are struggling right now and it's to a degree not their fault, but it kinda is in WWE's case because again Oh I think it's WWE's all fault. Eggs <laughs> in one basket and then that basket fucking tears its pack or decides it doesn't want to work every week anymore. You know, this is the price you pay. Oh, I wouldn't even chalk it up to just those two things. They cut a huge chunk of their roster to the point where they have no depth. So now when shit like this happens, they don't have anybody to fill the void. You can't move. Plenty of depth. They just have buried everyone. (laughs) Well, that's also true. But it does make it kind of harder to move, slide people up the card because then there's nobody to fill the lower part of it. I mean, I'm sure they could figure it out. I'm, like I said, I, they probably do have enough people. But there have been some, you know, sh- shocking people to leave in some of those earlier in those earlier cuts. Like now it's just a lot of NXT people we don't know for the most part. 
or NXT people who were from black and gold and have kind of kind of don't really have a place there anymore. But back in the beginning, they were cutting some people. We were like, holy shit, they're gone. <laughs> you know, so it, it makes it more difficult now because back when they had an abundance of people, it was would have been very easy to fill the slot. Now it makes it much more difficult because they've pruned the roster so much. Yeah, true. All right. Well, uh, I think that's all for this week. <laughs> like I said, a bit of a slow week, uh, just very dominated by all these unfortunate injuries and then the whole Finn Balor thing. Unfortunately, there hasn't really been any news on the MJF front. Like I said, he wasn't on Dynamite this week, but that's pretty much all we have out of that. Any other news, if it comes from SRS, they're friends, so it's probably true, but they're probably working you too. Uh, and also, too, we had... We still don't have really anything on the whole Sasha Banks and Naomi saga. So when we do get news on that, we will be sure to bring it to you. But until then, uh, be sure to like and subscribe so that when the news does come through, we can tell you. So one thing before we go. Um, if, you, if, if we get one more subscriber between now and next week, I'll tell you how James hurt his shoulder. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> all right it's solid tease out of danny um we'll have to go through some hippo laws for that but uh, i'm sure we'll be fine uh but anyway like i said like and subscribe so that you can learn this breaking news here on the market down podcast and hear us discuss any and all other news uh be sure to check out all of our social media stuff the description will be in the link below also besides the news if you do subscribe and we get to 100 i almost forgot James will wrap and dye his beard green. So that'll be fun. And I want it, people. We've been saying this for a while now. We all really want it. So please be sure to do that. So for Danny Hernandez, my name is Nick Cummings. Thank you so much for watching the Market Down podcast. And we'll see you here next time. Have a good one, everyone.